You're listening to Speaking Stella Girl with Terry Tkachuk, an interview series that inspires women to live their most stellar life. Terry is the co-founder of the Stella Girl movement, and she is sitting down with women all over the world to hear about the key moments in their lives and how they live boldly, compassionately, and ultimately became a stellar girl. Welcome to Speaking Stellar Girl. I'm your host, Terry Tkachuk, and I'm thrilled today to have Andrea Coriali joining me. Andrea is a celebrity caterer, founded, founder and president of Elegant Affairs based out of New York, um, the Long Island and the Hamptons. Elegant Affairs was just awarded Best Catering Company in the New York area by Expertise.com. She has been featured in Town & Country, Forbes, Oprah Magazine, Glamour, Brides, Every Day by Rachel Ray, Life and Style, and OK Magazine, just to name a few. Andrea herself makes regular guest appearances on CBS, Bravo, Fox, uh, NBC Long Island, MTV, and VH1. She has been crafting custom design award-winning New York catered events for more than 20 years and has worked with countless celebrities such as Billie Eilish, um, Mariah Carey, Leonardo DiCaprio, Adam Sandler, among so many, many others. I am so looking forward to hearing your stellar story. I am welcome, Andrea. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I am so thrilled to talk to you. When I when I spoke with your publicist, she's like, I, I looked you up and wow, what an incredibly accomplished um, woman. And um, that's exactly what Stellar Girl is all about. And I love in your bio that you talk mm. about excellence and that is what ignites you. Exactly. Well, you know, for me, I mean, I think a lot of Stella girls are, I always say I'm very, you know, type A, very detail oriented. And I really think that those are very key ingredients to making any business successful. Personally, okay. it can drive you insane, but from a business perspective, it always works out perfectly. It does. It does. Because you, I mean, you have so many events. What's your team like, actually, before we hear your background, I want to talk about, because you, you, you do rely so much on your team. You have so many events. Of course. Right. So Elegant Affairs, we're an off-premise catering company. Mm -hmm. We, we deal with the upper echelon and we do parties from Long Island. We do a lot of parties in the Hamptons and we also have offices in Manhattan and New York City. So my team in our main commissary, because we have three offices, Hamptons, New York City, Glen Cove, has about 45 to maybe a little more full-time employees. And then we also um, have maybe two, 300 part-time employees, um, sometimes even more, you know, depending upon a weekend, how busy we are, because it takes a team to be able to produce the events from behind the scenes. But mm -hmm. then when you actually get to the party and it's time for showtime, then you need to bring in a whole nother team of waiters, waitresses, bartenders, chefs, you know, tent companies, rental companies. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of people involved. So you don't just do the food, you do the actual event itself. Well, yes. When you're an off-premise caterer, and a lot of people don't really know what that means or okay. what, it, what it means. Like if you're going to a catering facility, okay. um, let's say you want to have a party and you go to the catering facility and the room is there and all the tables are there, everything's there. That's on-premise catering. Off-premise catering is when you're doing a party in your home, you're doing it on the beach, you're doing it in the office. You're doing it um, at a venue, like a vineyard, where they don't have anything, and you need to bring in an off-premise caterer. So it kind of goes with the territory. So we can't just worry about food. We have to make master lists of everything, from equipment to um, kitchen equipment to decorative equipment to every table, chair, china, flatware, glassware. So it's 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 all consuming. And then of course, if somebody needs tenting or generators, if they don't have enough electric, if they have to bring in bathrooms, valet parking, all of those things are part of an off-premise caterer's purview. Well, you are, I mean, your company <laughs> sh shines all alone. I mean, just your background itself, but I'd love to hear about it more because I did read that you um, went into hotel um, and restaurant management in school. Um, and th okay. then you, when you graduated, you had a company called Rent a Waitress before you graduated, actually in college. Right. When I when I was sixteen, I started that. Actually, you were sixteen. Yeah. I was. What 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 decided what what made you decide I'm going to just start this up? Like, is it your love of cooking? Was it your love of entertaining so, people? So basically, I started in the business when I was probably around 14 and a half, 15 years old. 
part time at a country club. It was my first job, and I fell in love with the whole world of catering um, right away. And when I worked at that country club, I really did every job. I was a bridal attendant, I was a bartender, I was a waitress, and by before the age of 16, I was what you called a maitre d's assistant. And I was really running weddings, bar mitzvahs, all kinds of corporate events, things of that nature. Then one day, um, somebody asked me to do a private party okay. at their estate. And I went there and they had their own staff because they had staff that lived there, a chef and all, his, all their, the staff that lived in the house. It was too big for them to handle. So I went in and that day I started picking flowers. I started telling everybody what to do. And at the end of the party, um, people, other couples were asking me if I had a business card, which I didn't. So I wrote my name and number on a cocktail napkin. My parents lived in Beth Page, Long Island at the time. A light bulb went off. I said, mom, dad, I want to start a business. I'm going to call it rent a waitress. And the money that I make at Crest Hollow Country Club, I'm going to use to advertise. I just need you to invest in a phone and a desk for me to start. And that's what I did. And by the time I graduated college, I had about 45 ish people that worked for me. I was working in all these beautiful estates in, in the New York area, um, doing mostly house parties at that, at, at that time. Um, and as soon as I graduated college, I went straight into off-premise catering, offering my client base, which was maybe 500 wealthy New York uh, clients at that time, and just started, you know, pushing away, trying to build up the catering. Grinding, business. grinding. You were totally determined to not fail and succeed in that you did. And now well, I'm... Yeah, go ahead. Go I'm ahead. sorry. Oh, no, no, please. So Please what me. I was saying was that, and then I decided that I didn't want to be just, you know... A Long Island or you know New York caterer. I wanted I wanted more press. I wanted to grow my business uh, quickly, so I took a dive or a risk, I should say, and I decided to hire a PR firm, um, which is the same PR firm that you spoke to, to really kind of get the press that I needed to take things to a different level. And that's exactly what I did. And that's when I started to build my whole Hamptons business. Um, back in the day, I did Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon's you know, wedding reception. I was written up in page six a lot for yes. all different types of celebrity events that I was doing. And then my Hamptons business kind of exploded. Um, so this happened over a number of years, but that was also a big pivot point for me when, you know, it's very hard when you have your own business and you're like, do you spend the money on PR? Because it's not always a tangible thing, right? right. You can't the, say the long I spent X amount and I made X amount, mm -hmm. you know, it's, and especially for my kind of industry, I, I always use the example of, let's say you wanted to let's say you own Lexus and you put out a commercial for Lexus. It's not like someone's buying a car tomorrow. It's for brand recognition Correct. because it's not like someone's buying a party, you know, or needs to do a party tomorrow. You just want to always keep your name at the top of everybody's top, top of us. And you are, you're at the top of Google. You're at the top of everything. Your PR company's done an amazing job. Yeah. And it's just, it's left to, it, I love these stories because you have such a long journey and it took you a long time to get there. And people always want the fast fix, but it takes like three to four years to be an overnight success. And no one understands. Three to four, talk about like 13 to 18, you know, like, I mean, it really depends. I mean, there is, listen, unless you have parents who come in and give you money, which I did not have mm -hmm. that at all. Um, or, you know, you have a, a, a big investor in, in a company. It's very, very hard. You know, it's, it's just, it's sweat, blood and tears mm -hmm. for a long time until you have enough money to build an infrastructure and hire people. And for people many forget years. about that. They, they just want the fast fix. They get out of college. They want the 200 to $500,000 a year job. And they oh, don't I realize know. what it takes to get there and how much. Well, even, you know, even the people that work for me now, like they, they don't, they don't know know like everything that you know you're talking I started you know in 1994 you know what I mean you're talking a long time ago before and social media before any of this before social media mm -hmm. I remember being on Facebook 
and you know uh, feeling like at work feeling like oh my god this is like social I shouldn't be doing this and yes you know I, I remember that like feeling that push and pull back in the day but you know my instincts were on because we were able to you know build you know a following now that we've you know there's so much I mean social media is a whole nother level besides PR, besides having now professional video and all the things that you need to do to keep up and Before to be on your website. Of yeah. Even the website itself, even the website, you know, very, very expensive, that website. And, you know, hours, it took me a year to get that done, you know? Yes. So. And then, but you also drive a lot of traffic to your website because of all the blogs that are written um, either yes. you, by you or, or your staff, because yeah. that is what drive, that's what you own Instagram and Facebook. They could all go away in a year, right? right? Well, not yeah. that it will hope to goodness, but we, what we own is our, is our website, our writing, and everyone mm -hmm. thinks like SEO is dead and no one's blogging anymore, but that is 100% not true because I don't think, I don't think it's true. And as a business owner, you don't, you know, I don't know about everybody else's business, but I know that mine, it, there's a lot of moving parts and taking the time to blog and make all those differences in SEO does make a difference, you know, and you have to decide, like, for instance, I have a marketing person on my team now that that really works with me and writes all those blogs before if I didn't have that and I didn't grow my infrastructure you know I wouldn't have the blogs and without the blogs you know I mean one thing There's is no traffic effect, one thing after yeah. the other right yeah. which you know which really you know it does it does help tra traffic and SEO tremendously so how many events do you cater a year do you think on average Oh my God. Well, this is next week alone. So oh you my, can do that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so you see all those events? Wow. That's a lot of events. Um, yes. Next it is. week is 22 events. Okay. So actually what I'm spending my time doing today is reading through every single event, which I still like to do. Um, and just, you know, troubleshoot them, see if I see anything that looks off, if they forgot something, you know, in our business, you can't forget anything. No. Right. So you, you really, really, really need to be detailed. If you're in the middle of a field and you have no electricity or running water and you forget, you know, the coffee urn, guess what? You know, you're in trouble. So yeah. there's a lot of pressure, you know, um, and with lots of deadlines and curtain calls, because ultimately, no matter what happens and no matter how much you plan in the off premise world, in that environment, ultimately, there's so many moving parts something will go slightly wrong. So you have to be able to react and move on your feet quickly. Absolutely. Let's talk about, I, I always wonder when I go to these events, whether these large weddings off premise and as you said, in a vineyard, how do you keep the food warm? Because, or fresh, is it coming off? Do you have like- um, Oh, that's an, that's an excellent question that I can answer for you. One okay. of the things that Elegant Affairs prides itself in um, is really what I was call restaurant quality cuisine in a catered environment. Caterers always, all premise caterers always have a bad rap, you know, rubber chicken, this, that. We, nothing like that comes out of our kitchen. There is no hors d'oeuvre that comes out of a box. You know, if you look at our website or if you go on our Instagram, yeah, Elegant Hair is one, mm -hmm. right? You'll see all of the food. So let's just say we're doing hors d'oeuvres. Whenever I do an event, I'm always sending a team of chefs. You have, then you have your captain, which is a person running the show. And then you have all of your staff. I won't do a party without chefs. I don't do any drop off food. So when we're at an event, how do we keep the food hot and fresh is we build a field kitchen. So well, it's in somebody's garage, it's in a tent. We bring on all of our own ovens and all of the food is finished and prepped on site. So let's just say you're having filet mignon as a main course. That's getting cooked on site and then served. If we're serving even something like steak frites with French fries or frites, right. that's being fried fresh on site. That's and that's nice. what makes all the difference in the world. That is incredible. I mean, the trucks and the transportation and everything that well, you must have yeah, to get, we, even get we everything have about there. 12 refrigerated box trucks. So besides the building that I'm in now, which is about seven or 8,000 square feet, we have uh, uh, another 12 or 14,000 uh, square foot warehouse and that houses tables, chairs, and it looks like a, a beautiful 
what used to be Pier One Imports because they're not around anymore, but all different beautiful serving pieces and platters and candles and lanterns because another part of what we do and what my passion is, is pairing food with a beautiful visual presentation. That's what grew our reputation. Thus, that's why we have, you know, the warehouse. Right. Um, and do you do signature then- cocktails as well? Yeah, you know what? I am not a huge fan because some parties have like four or five. Nobody ever drinks them. Awesome. I, I It drives me crazy, but it is a trend. And yes, we do them all the time, signature cocktails. There's so many different ones from Frosé to Rosé Sangria to, you know, Aperol Spritz. I mean, there's so many of them. Of course. Um, fruity ones, non-fruity ones. One's made with elderflower liqueur, some not, you know, there's so many different varieties. Well, so when did you decide um, that you were going to expand? Because obviously you had to start small and then you're like, okay, this is my aha moment. Well, I this started season. out of my house. My first kitchen I rented from midnight till six in the morning. Okay. Then I finally, my parents took a second mortgage out on their house and gave me $20,000 to buy a building. I paid them back. This was, you know, talking a long time ago. That was like a 2000 square foot building grew out of that within a few years, gave up half of my salary to hire a general manager because I was, I was literally running myself. You have to make a lot of sacrifices. That's what, you know, there's no easy way. I know like, you know, I was reading the other day, like the top 10 jobs that young people out of school, they want to be like an influencer, like even influencers, you know, you don't always make as much money as you think you get a lot of free product, but you know, it's, it's work ethic. You, there's no easy way you want, you know, unless you get extremely lucky, which is probably like the top, 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 top 1% maybe even less you you cannot be successful with an extreme amount of consistency determination and hard work absolutely resilience all of that you have to be so yeah. strong in everything that you want and such a go-getter yeah. I call them glow getters at stellar girls because I get yeah. up and just glow and be happy and po- I mean of course there's going to be those times but we talked a little bit earlier about the 90 10 rule it's like there's going to be days that you know 10 percent or 10 minutes of that particular moment or that particular event that's not going to go well and how you pivot and how you react to all of that is just you know I I I always use this analogy tell me over and over again is that I always feel like one of those big blue whales that have all those slash marks on it from just the trials and tribulations of all the things that you've been through right so your skin gets tougher as you as you as you go on you know so when something happens instead of like panicking you you realize that you you know you have to just react in the moment a lot of 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 what we do is troubleshooting and put in in, and putting out fireballs because there are just many um you know we just did the kygo concert last weekend that was like two or 3000 people on top of doing multiple weddings and other events, you know, it's just, it's, it's extreme organization and you have to, you know, again, it's all about being detailed, but I think that's in any business Mm -hmm. Um, and going that, you know, going the extra mile, you know, like always going the extra mile, especially in the beginning until, until you have a business that's, that's running on reputation and, and, and you're not struggling to get the calls, you know, in that's, that are going to lead to business. And so you, I mean, obviously you're, you're very passionate about your work. Let's talk about person, your personal life. Like what brings Andrea joy? Is it travel? Is it alone time? Is I, it- first of all, I love to travel right before COVID that one year I was in Greece and Italy and Ireland and Israel. And as soon as I can, I will get back to that I don't know. All of a sudden I had a wake up call and I'm like, you know what? I, I, I need to start doing this. I dedicated my entire life to working. And for, for a big part of that, it was seven days a week, you know, for, I would just say in the last 10 years, maybe, maybe eight, you know, maybe I, I, you know, I don't go do seven days a week anymore, but I did for a long time. So traveling is one golf. I love golf. Do you I, tell, Oh my gosh. I awesome. do. I play golf in a women's league on every Tuesday. I love that. I'm not very good, but I love to, I love going out there. 
Well, I mean, I'm not single, but it, you know, everyone's the, all of those single ladies out there who are trying to find a, it's a great way to find a guy. <laughs> just, just FYI, because they're all at the golf course, right? Not that's where I met mine, but I'm just, just, just an FYI. And it's, for me, it's a great sport. I love being out there for four hours. I love not having my cell phone because mm-hmm. it's like a kind of a big no-no in golf. Right. And, um, you know, just being out there in the, in the greenery, I really am like a nature girl, like at heart, like that's where I find my, my, my happy, my happy place. Like even at my house, I, you know, it kind of like has a, um, I don't know, it has, it's, it has a very charming feeling to it. And I have lots of bird feeders around and, you know, I, I, t- I find a lot of joy in filling my bird feeders, attending to my garden, the small things. It's it the be, small thing. It can be small things. Yeah. Every day. I can day. Hear less about going to the Kygo concert or like any of those things like that. They don't, I, I they, they just don't excite me anymore. And have, are celebrity events more particular than a regular wedding or, or is it all just the same? Everyone gets treated exactly the same. Yeah. I mean, when you're dealing with celebrities, many times you're not dealing with the celebrity itself, but they have layers of people. Of so you get to talk and interact with them. Yeah, of course. But, you know, th- there's always, you know, a lot involved with it, you know, mm-hmm. and everything's last minute and they, you know, they expect you to just hurry up and run and get things done, not really understanding or being empathetic to how much work it is to, to, you know, get things done. It is. Um, but I- Yes. Yeah, celebrities, you know, yes, we do a lot of, we do a lot of them, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, all the time. I'm not going to ask you who your favorite is, but I, I worked mm-hmm. for, um, a company, um, about 15 years ago and we managed Brian Adams, um, Martina McBride, um, yeah. Bob Rock, um, Michael Buble, who you might, yeah. you might know as well. And, um, yeah, I mean, they are, they're people just like us, but yeah, they have, um, I, I felt like I was girl Friday some of the time. Right. Sometimes I, that's awesome. And sometimes, you know, when, when people think of celebrities, you know, if you really think about it, you know, we're always self-conscious, right? Most people are like about, you know, what you look like or this or that. Can you imagine being on stage and under scrutiny, especially now with like social mm-hmm. media? It's a nightmare. Like, like, like you, 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 everyone's always coming at you when you go to an event. It, it's, it's, it's not like, and that's one thing that I, I definitely learned. It is not like what people think it is. No, you know? it's not. You have to it's walk out of the house, really, pop it's a around. very isolated life. It, it really is. is. It is. You're in your gated community and heaven forbid you take out the garbage in your pajamas because it'll be on the page six. Right. And, yeah. It's Which, a, Let's say you're dehydrated and you fit, your skin looks like crap. Like, what are you going to do? You're human. But but then, it, you know, it's horrible that, that you have that fear that you're going to be exposed, you know, at one point. So, yeah, absolutely. So let's yeah. talk about your personal life. You're happily married. You found the love of your life. Yes. yes. And we have a beautiful home together. I never had my own children. He has three step uh, sons that, okay. I mean, I have three step sons, which are his sons. Um, and you know, we, we live a good life. I have, I have a place in, um, Boca Raton, Florida, right on the water, which is beautiful. I'm on the board of my building there. Um, I, I spend, I spend as much time there as I can. I would, I never thought I would like Florida because it has such kind of not a bad rap, but it like retire. Florida is so amazing now. It's like, it's like a cleaner California with, no hills and more humidity, but so many like young people and dogs and healthy. And, you know, it's completely transformed from the retirement state to, you know, it's just a happy happy place to go. 100%. It's happy and it's happening, you know, like, especially like the East coast of Florida, because there's so many New York people down there that they just kind of made it like a, not a mini New York, but you getting all really good restaurants. Like sometimes when you travel to places, you're not getting that kind of diversity except in Miami, but that has totally, you know, changed. That's, so. that's changed as well. I love to travel. It's one of my, that's my passion. I think if I spend oh, money on too. anything, that's where I want to go. So next on my bucket list is Antarctica. I want to oh. go to. Fen- yeah. I- wow. That's a lot of islands. I want to go to. I'm off to Alaska yeah. tomorrow with my family of six. Oh my God. I would love that. I've yeah. So we're going to go check out all the, 
And we're going to hit like, I think everything, obviously Anchorage, um, the Denali park, Fairbanks, like we're going to do, we're going to go halibut fishing. So it's, it's, it's going to be fun for the kids. And I'll probably need a vacation from my vacation, but it's okay. You know, I bring a nanny. nanny. I, yes. I would love to have a nanny. That would be lovely. Wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. My kids are 11 to 17. So yeah, there's a, uh. it's, a it's busy, it's busy, but it's good. It's good. And that's what makes, you know, all of these moments and all this work paid off when you can take a week and hopefully put your phone away um, as much as possible and enjoy them and, yep. and um, get to see a part of the world. Well, that you better you- put your phone away for the week. Just, just check out, you know, yeah, put somebody know. else in charge. That, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. And it's been so absolutely lovely to talk to you today. I, I mean, sure. I just think like these, these stories get untold and, you know, you go on your appearances and they talk about, you know, the events, but we don't know the human behind it and, and how, what, what it took you to get there. And, um, thank you for sharing your story. I really, I, it's a beautiful journey and, um, I've learned, I'm so inspired by you. Um, oh, and you. I really appreciate you speaking with all of us today. Yeah. Lovely. And, uh, you are at one heck of a stellar girl. Oh, That's for yeah. darn sure. Absolutely. <laughs> well, oh. have a great time in Alaska. Thank you. We'll see you on the other side and good luck with your crazy busy summer. I don't think all you right. have a, I don't thank think you, you have a downtime. That's for sure. <laughs> nope. <laughs> not for elegant affairs. And we will make sure that, um, you will, you know, all your Instagrams and all your handles and your website will be on everything. So you don't have to plug yourself. We will do all that for you. Excellent. Thank you. I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of new episodes. To learn more about the stellar girl movement, please visit us at stellargirl.com.